you know, you get caught up in the competitive emotions of it all and just between the, the kick and the onside and the fourth down and then having the missed field goal. I mean, there were, there were so many, oh my gosh, moments in that game. But again, the thing that always excites you the most is to be able to come back to those kids at the end of the game and say, I told you so. You know, in the first quarter when they're on a run and at halftime when you see that you're down, whether it's football or life, at some point, everything's gonna be stacked against you and it's gonna seem like you got no way out. But if you just keep going and you stick together and you do the next best thing, these things are possible. Cody, can you take us through the onside kicks from the first one to the penalty to the second one? What was your thinking? And why did you change the kicker? Well, uh, so it was a conversation I had with Jesse after the first one. You know, the, the middle dribble based on alignment was probably our best option. Um, but we didn't, we didn't hit it great, clearly. I mean, it was uh, a very unique circumstance. And then the penalty, just a, a gift from the heavens to give us another shot at it. What I told Jesse is let's make sure it's not just is this good on the board, but who do we really trust to make these plays? It's kind of like throwing it to Freddie at the on that fourth down. We didn't know like that was not necessarily a great play, but I was saying, what do I have on the sheet where I can throw it to Christian Fredrickson? Just because if you're gonna go down, you gotta go down with your best guys. And we absolutely love Ross. But Thomas is a guy who's been here through thick and thin as a bangle, and he works on that little tinker and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the middle dribble might be better on the board, but you saw what Thomas can do, that it's a very low percentage kick when any, any time you try and kick it out to the numbers, but Thomas hit it perfect, and TB was there to make a play. And I mean, just hats off to those guys. Um, I'm proud of Jesse for making the adjustment, proud of Thomas for going in there and making a huge play when we needed it. And obviously, Tyler Bohannon was a guy who had a great second half, um, had that huge play. And to have the attitude he had on the sidelines in the first half when he knew he couldn't play and to come out and make, you know, arguably the most important play of the game was, was special. Cody, down 42-14 in the third. Have you ever had a bigger comeback than that in your career? Uh, I don't think I have. Um, I would unfortunately say there was one time in college where a team came back and beat me doing that. And my uh, alma mater did it again last night. You know, they were up 29-0 on Stanford. And that's exactly what I told the guys. Like, hey, like, I love the buffs, but, you know, there's certain things that have to happen. You have to hit a couple big plays. You have to have a couple things go your way. But it's about being in the mindset where you're ready to capitalize on those things and being positive and knowing that, hey, what's the next best action that we can take and attack in that way. And, again, hey, we had a lot of things go our way that had to make this possible. It's not like we were perfect and they were perfect and just happened. But, I mean, we, we got lucky on a few, but our guys were ready to capitalize on those opportunities. And you have to in every big comeback win. There are always plays, there are always breaks that go their way, but a huge credit to our guys for being in the mindset about just attacking and making the next best uh, next best play. Did you um, did you say anything to the guys in the locker room at half that you can recall that might have, might have I mean, influenced Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I mean, it's not like a win-win for the Gipper speech or anything. It's, uh, I just told many guys, like, I love you whether we win or lose, uh, but I do know that if you just keep playing, you're gonna be proud of the result. And you wanna make your teammates proud, you wanna make yourself proud, you wanna make your family proud, and none of those people really care what the score is, right? My mom has never come to a game and said, Cody, like, I can't believe you lost that football game. No, she's like, I'm proud of you, I love you. And I think when you have good teammates out there, you, you might mourn together, you might mourn a big loss, but you're still gonna love each other and be proud of the effort that you gave each other. And I think, you know, the families and the people that stands are gonna be proud of these guys for the way that they play. Wins are nice. But when you play the game, it's about honoring the game with the way that you approach every situation, your resilience, your toughness, your camaraderie. And those are the things that allowed us to prevail when opportunities presented themselves. Cody, you alternated your quarterbacks, frankly, masterfully. I mean, they both seemed to do what they needed to do at the right time. What did you see on the sidelines that made you say, okay, Hunter, now it's your time. Jordan, I'm putting you back in, win the game, take me through that. Yeah, so uh, one of our, you know, going into halftime, I just wanted Jordan to calm down a little bit, which Hunter's so even keeled. And it, Jordan's not erratic, but he's a young guy. You want to talk to him, let him breathe a little bit, and just watch things from the sideline, how they transpire without the threat of live bullets. And uh, Hunter went out, did a great job, came out in the second half, and it wasn't necessarily that Hunter had thrown the interception that we wanted to take him out for the majority of the stuff. It was that we were saying, okay, well, now probably all the, the RPO stuff and the quarterback run is going to be less effective. Let's make sure we're trying to push the ball down the field. We felt like Jordan gave us the best opportunity to do that. I can't say enough about how awesome those guys handle the entire situation and allow us to adjust them. I think they're very realistic with each other. We're open and honest. But it was Jordan Cook's birthday on October 11th. 
and we were all like we had a bunch of guys on the team signing the card for Jordan and one guy in big letters wrote I love you JC happy birthday was Hunter Hayes you know so if you guys think that there's any weird jealousy competitive it's not and I think it's it's how you treat the guys and you got to make sure you lift up their respective skill sets and let them know that you have a lot of confidence in them and uh, really proud of both those guys your defense in a way, you're de as, as crazy as it sounds, considering you gave up over 40 points, but you could make the case that your defense won the game twice. They had first and goal inside the 10, and you held them to field goals. Exactly, right? I, I think you talk about all the time. You got to score touchdowns to win games. I mean, the, the game is rigged for the offense now. That if you make people play basketball and live on three pointers, you're going to have a shot. You got to score sevens, and the same thing coming back. You know, I was really happy that we ended up scoring on the third down right before halftime because I didn't want to be faced with the decision: oh, should I kick it or go for it on fourth and risk going into halftime empty-handed? You got to play to win the game, and you got to score sevens when you're behind. And for our defense to hold them to threes, those are huge wins for every football team. Those, hats off to those guys. I mean, that that's 21st century football, right? Offense is going to go up and down the field, hold them to field goals. So you got a shot to win the game. Coach, let's talk about Thomas Kopcho. He misses the field goal. Obviously, that's in his head. Biggest PAT of his season so far. He goes out and nails it. You know what? What we seen out of Thomas? Well, I, I think Thomas is a really selfless kid that everybody's rooting for. So he's not a guy that anybody loses faith in at any point. You would love to hit every field goal, but you can't make every shot. But the way he prepares and the way he treats people and the way he approaches his craft, you, you love the guy and root for him. So we all have his back. And if we would have had to kick another field goal to win it, we would have sent Thomas out there happily. And man, looking at that guy hit the PAT and coming and, and kick the onside. Wow, like I'm super proud of that guy. Let's talk about that onside. Um, was was did, did it go down as, as we called it on the field? Was that was that you know? The yeah. Well, I mean, the original part was a disaster. I mean, we tried to go middle dribble and it didn't even go ten yards. So um, we got lucky. Um, I knew that at some point we were going to have to have some breaks and that uh, games when they're tight can't get chippy. And that was one. I mean, there's no schematical coach or thing that anything we did. We just got lucky again. And I think al being allowed that time. Just let you reset. Like, who do you trust the most in this moment? And, and Thomas is one of those guys. Does, does this help um, as a statement win for your program, not for you guys as personally, because I know you guys believe in yourself as a team, but for outside the people in the community in the program that oh, we're we're really here to stay now, and we're trying to make some noise. Here. Yeah, well, I think we got to do more than win two games to say we're here to, here to stay. But to me, none of that. None of that is ever based on a win-loss margin. You know, it's not about the win. It's about the way that you play. And I hope that when people turn on the tape, they see a team that's going to fight to the end and that they're going to play quality football and that they're going to play for each other and always have a strong sense of belief. Uh, that's what I want to see from our football team. I think for our guys, again, where you talk about the statement, it's not so much just a, a statement as it is, hey, like, the proof is in the pudding. Like, they just have some backing that – Football or life, just keep going. And uh, you can push through adversity and have an opportunity no matter how dull the circumstances is. So I think that that does help from the kid's standpoint of future adversity that comes your way. Um, but every situation is going to be totally different. And I'm excited to get to work with these guys the rest of the year because we're going to have a lot, of, a lot of tough situations come our way. And we may not respond admirably to all of them, but we're sure going to try and point at this will help us. Did you come out of it okay injury-wise tonight? Coach? I think so. I, I I don't totally know. We didn't have any major ones in the middle of the game that I know. You know? No, I, no, I, didn't see, anyone, I, didn't see I mean, Chester got rolled up on it. He kind of got rolled up backwards. Based on the way he was moving it around painfully, It doesn't. it's not a bad thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Normally when it's a bad knee injury, you don't feel a whole lot. You're just yeah. it's yeah. loose and uncomfortable. Um, so we'll see what happens with Chester, but there, there's not a more beloved guy on the team. I mean, the locker when Chester walks in the locker room, people act like they want the Super Bowl. I mean, people love seeing that guy. So he's tough. He's a great kid. He'll have a good support structure, and I know our sports medicine staff will take care of him, and, and we'll figure out exactly what that is and, uh, as we get into the next week. If you could just sing one more guy's praises, Chayton James, 15 catches, 206 yards for a touchdown. I'm just yeah, Chayton's awesome. He, he, I told you, Chayton, Chayton is a guy that he, he's one of the guys that I had to calm down in the first quarter because – Shaden, even though he walks around and he's very quiet and he smiles all the time, he's super competitive. And I think just knowing how the you know the first couple drives went, I don't know if you guys noticed in the stands, but we had a couple two plays where Shaden had surefire touchdowns. And we just didn't miss them. I mean, there was a the one movement throw and then the the double move that we had when we were an empty going that way. And Shaden beat the guy by 10 yards, but we just fell off a protection a hair early. Jordan did a good job moving out and, and giving us a shot to make a throw, but. I mean, a touchdown's better than a 10 yard gain, and Shaden was bumped because we had seen on film that that was going to be good. And you don't get those premier looks like they're lined up exactly how we talked about it, and we got the right play called. This is a 60 yard touchdown, and we missed it. 
And those are the things that you talk about when you're on the sideline that Shaden was, he was pretty upset. I had to calm him down. But again, just being able to, I, I think I have a great relationship with him and he trusts me and he did calm down. And again, you just see him continuing to respond. That, hey, just, just makes the next best play. We got to throw it a lot and we need you to be all in to be a part of it. And he did. I mean, after we had that first initial conversation, he got his frustration out of the way. He was smiling, head down, picking people up, running around there, making plays. And to see him break some tackles and get some extra yards, I mean, that, that's what's going to make our offense go. Because if you get tackled every time you catch it, I mean, you could throw it to me and you're not going to have much success. But yeah, Chaden's a stud. How are we going to take this win and look forward to Portland State and capitalize on this moment? Again, if, if anything, I think the best thing a win does is it gives your kid a, a smile and a little bit of confidence. But, I mean, Portland State just took NAU to the woodshed in Flagstaff, which is super hard. And Obviously, Barney, um, he's, he's a great coach. He's been there for a long time. And they are funky on defense, and they're you know diverse on offense. And um, he, he's going to be ready for the Bengals. I think he always has a little love. Uh, special bone to pick uh, with the Bengals every time he plays, as he should, because he was here when they were great, right? He loves Pocatello, and uh, as he should. But uh, we're excited to go play a really quality opponent next week. But it's just, it makes the Mondays and the Tuesdays and the Wednesdays when you're really going through some hard work, you're watching a ton of film, putting in all the lonely hours, and your body's still sore and not totally recovered, that you can just push through it with a smile on your face and get ready to go. Okay, thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it.